classification of soil water. So soil water is classified as chemical <coughs> classification and biological classification is classified as so physical classification and biological classification so under physical classification yes it will come uh -huh. hygroscopic water capillary water and gravitational water so under biological classification, it is classified as drainable water, available water, and unavailable water. So let me explain. you consider a small soil particle, say it is a small soil particle. You consider a small soil particle. Now if you put this soil particle in a humid condition, what will happen? It will absorb water, isn't it? It will absorb water. Say these are the water molecules surrounding the soil particle. Now if you add on water, you will get another layer of water here. You will get another layer of water here. So you tell me where the attraction will be more? Near the water molecule, nearer the soil particle or away from the soil particle? Near the soil particle, the attraction will be more. When it goes away, attraction will be less. If the soil particle is open dry, it is dry, so the first layer will be attracted at a tension of 10,000 bar. The first layer, the first layer will be attracted at a tension of 10,000 bar. So gradually, that attraction will be decreasing. It will decrease. You consider a layer where attraction is minus, attraction is 31 bar. You consider a layer where attraction is 31 bar. Again, when it moves away, again attraction decreases. You consider another layer where attraction is minus 0.3 bar. So what is hygroscopic water here? The water molecule which are present between this 10,000 bar and 31 bar, this water is called hygroscopic water. The water which are present between 10,000 bar and 31 bar is called hygroscopic water. Hygroscopic water. Water which are present between 31 bar and 0.3 bar is called capillary water. This, this water is called this water is called capillary water. So what is hygroscopy water? Water which are held between 10,000 bar and 31 bar. This is called hygroscopic water. The water which are present between 31 bar and minus 0.3 bar is called capillary water. And what is gravitational water? The, the, so this soil particle can hold water up to 0.3 bar. It can hold water up to 0.3 bar. It may be 0.3 to 0.1 depending upon the soil. 
So it can hold water up to 0.3 or 0.1 bar. Beyond that, it cannot hold the water. If it cannot hold the water, what will happen? That water will move down due to gravity. This water is called gravitational water. This water is called gravitational water. So water, that, what is hygroscopic water? The water which are between 10,000 bar to 31 bar is hygroscopic water. The water which are between 31 bar and 0.3 bar is called capillary water. The water which are beyond 0.3 bar, which cannot be, which cannot be held by the soil is called gravitational water. This is the same, the, the same diagram here. So this is the soil particle. So when oven dry, the first water layer is held at the suction of 10,000. At, at the 10,000, it is held at the tension of 10,000 bar. It is when it is going away, the tension is decreasing. It is 31 bar. The water molecule between this and this is called what is? It is hygroscopic water. So when it comes away, it reaches 0.1 to 0.3 bar, that is, that is, that means the water between 31 bar and between 0.1 to 0.3 bar is, this, this is the capillary water and beyond that, it is gravitational water. So the water which are held, the water which are held between 10,000 bar to minus 1 to minus 0.3 bar, these are always held in the microspore. These are always held in the micropore. That means water can be retained only in the only in the micropore. Macropores cannot hold water. The water which will be present in the macropores, they will be drained by gravity. So this water present in the macropores, they will be the gravitational water. They will be pulled down due to gravity. So other this other water is capillary water. So a part of capillary water, a part of, no, the, the same thing, it is represented by another diagram. So this is again the soil particles. So up to 31 bar, this is hygroscopic water again. From 31 bar to 0.3 bar, this is again capillary water. Beyond that, this is gravitational water. So a part of a car, a part of capillary water is available to available to the plant. Entire capillary water is not available to the plant. Gravitational water is definitely not available to the plant. Because it is drained by the gravity, it is not retained in the soil. If the water is retained in the soil, then it will be available to the plant. If it is not retained by the plant, definitely it is not available to the plant. So, that means capillary water will be available, but not the entire capillary water. A part of the capillary water will be available to the plant. So the entire thing, now we can think in a different angle. We can think entire thing from a different angle. See, this is the entire soil system. These are the soil particles. These are the soil particles. If you add here, if you add, these are the, these are the, the vacant place are the voids. These are voids which are occupied by air. If you add water, it will be occupied by water. So if you add water, so entire this voids will be occupied by water. So, this void and in this entire void, there will be both macropore as well as micropores. In this entire void, there will be some pores will be macropores, some pores will be micropores. So, what is the size of macropore? More than 0.06 micromet. If it is less than 0.08, it will be micropore. So, if it is more than that, it will be macropore. So. Uh, When you give water, so this void will be occupied by both macro and micro pore. So due to the gravity, due to the gravity, water which are held by the macro pores, they will be drained away. Those gravitational water, which we discuss, where we discuss this dish water. 
this gravitational water this will be this will be brought down due to gravity so only the water which are present in the micropores they will be retained that means if you if you saturate the soil by putting water so entire voids will be occupied by water so if it is allowed to drain if it is allowed to drain water which are present in the micropore they will be drained due to gravity so after around 2 to 2 to 3 days depending upon the type of soil so entire gravitational water will be going down due to gravity from the soil system and water which are present in the micropores will be retained so at that point at that point at that point water content in the soil is called field capacity so are you getting my point what is field capacity then if soil is saturated and allowed to drain so after two to three days the water which are present in the macropores will be drained away due to gravity so only the water which are present in the micropores will be retained after 24 to 78 hours the water content in that condition in that in that state is called field capacity of the soil now the question is so in field capacity will the soil retain water in field capacity at all the time definitely no so it will water content again it will be reduced why because a part of the water will evaporate due to evaporation and if plants are grown the plants will take water so that means due to evapotranspiration water will again come down so this water which are present in the capillary this capillary tubes will be used by the plants grown on it so the plants will take up this water so after some time after some days plants will not be able to take up water plants will wilt so initially when there is sufficient water plants will take up water but after some days it will it will go to a state where it cannot take up water plant will permanently wilt initially it will wilt during say one two hours again it will regain but gradually it will permanently wilt so even if you bring it to a dark humid chamber then also it will not regain its again its turgidity so for few days if it wills if you bring it to the dark humid chamber it will regain its turgidity but when it permanently wills even if you bring it to the dark humid chamber it will not regain its turgidity so at that position at that position the moisture content in the soil is called permanent wilting point it is called permanent wilting point so you remember this this the condition is not permanent wilting point the moisture content in the soil is permanent wilting point the condition when it wills that condition is not permanent wilting point the moisture content the moisture content in the soil corresponding to the permanent wilting is called permanent wilting point now which water is available to plant then the moisture content between fill capacity and permanent wilting point the water content between field capacity and permanent wilting point is called available water. What is available water then? Available water is is those water which is present between field capacity and permanent wilting point. The water which is present between field capacity and permanent wilting point is called so the the second term of biological classification that means the water which is present between field capacity and permanent wilting point is available water which is drainable water then the, yes the the gravitational water which we classified in physical classification as gravitational water the water 
in physical classification where we classified as gravitational water is drainable water in biological classification. The water which cannot be retained by the soil will be drained away. That is called drainable water in biological classification. What is unavailable water then? Yes, the, the water, so beyond that range, minus 15 bar, is called unavailable water. So here, again there is question. So in different literature, it is again classified in two ways. That means, at field capacity, what is the tension? Minus 0 0.12 minus 0 0.3 bar, isn't it? 0 0.12, 0 0.3 bar. At permanent wilting point, at permanent wilting point, the tension is 15 bar. So at 15 bar, so plant will show permanent wilting. So in permanent wilting, actually plants will not die. In permanent wilting, plants will not die. If, if you give water, it will regain its, it will, at least it will live again, it will, it will regain its turgidity. So if it's allowed to, if it's allowed to wilt like that at At 60 bar, it will totally dry. That means at 60 bar, even if you go give water, plants will not live. It will not gain its turgidity. So, at this point, at this point, it is called ultimate wilting point. That means plant will ultimately die. The water content between this 15 bar and 16 bar is called water available for survival. Water available for survival. The same diagram here. This is what is this? This is this is hygroscopic water. This is capillary water. So a part of capillary water is from 31 bar to how much? 0.3 bar. That means entire capillary water is not available to plant. A part of this from where? From 15 bar to 0.3 bar it is available. From 31 to 15 bar it is not available. So that means capillary water is available to plant but not entire capillary water. A part of capillary water will be available to plant. Is hygroscopic water available to plant? No, definitely not. Gravitation water? No, definitely not. This is the gravitational water. Now you can see this diagram. So here the soil is totally saturated. You, you, you consider this as four different type of soil. Okay. So it is the field is totally saturated. Saturated means its entire void is occupied by water. If its entire void is occupied by water, the water which are present in the macro pores will be drained by gravity. These are the water. These are the waters which are drained by gravity. Take a say. So after, after two to three days, what will happen? Entire water present in the macro pores will be drained away. When entire water is drained away, no more water will be drained by gravity. Entire water will be retained. So at that point, water content is called? Called field capacity. OK. Now here, the water present here, it will again go away due to evaporation and transpiration. So after some day, some time, when it reaches a tension of 15 bar, so plant will show permanent wilting. So this is the, that means this is the, this is the moisture content at permanent wilting. So after that also, if you keep the soil, if you keep the soil like that, so again soil will be losing water. So at 31 bar it will reach minus 31 bar so it will reach that point. See so the water content corresponding to the minus 31 bar is called hygroscopic coefficient. The water content corresponding to minus point to point, minus point 0.3 bar is called field capacity. 
the water content corresponding to 15 bar is called permanent wilting point. The water content in the soil at 31 bar is called hygroscopic coefficient. That means water content between hygroscopic coefficient and 10,000 bar is called, called hygroscopic water. So this, this is the point at hygroscopic water, soil is totally dry. Now again, now you see the difference between these two diagram. What is the difference between this? This and this? What is the difference? Here the values are positive. Here it is negative. That means when you classify it in terms of tension, it is positive. 31 bar, 15 1 bar like that. When you classify it in terms of potential, value will be same, sign will be reverse. It will be minus 13 bar potential, minus 31 bar potential like that. <coughs> the entire thing, it is given in this diagram. This is the soil particle. Here the water molecule is attracted at the tension of how much bar? 10,000 bar. Here it is. 31 bar, so the water molecules between 31 bar, 31 bar is hygroscopic coefficient. See, water molecules between hygroscopic coefficient and the soil particle is hygroscopic water. Again, it is, here it is held at the tension of how much? What bar? Minus 0.1 bar to minus 0.3 bar. The, this water is capillary water. The water beyond this is gravitational water. So a part of capillary water will be available to the plant. <laughs> so gravitational water already I have explained. So this is free water that moves through gravity. So gravitational water where you get it? You get it in the macro pores. So if if entire macro pore is filled up with water, in case of upland rise, it will suffer from aeration, so plant will wilt. <coughs> this is capillary water. Where you get this capillary water? You will get the capillary water in micro pores. You will get the capillary water in the micro pores. So capillary water is held against gravity. It's not it. Oh, why, why capillary water cannot be drained by gravity? When the gravity will, when the gravity will remove the water? When the gravitational pull is higher than the attraction between water molecules and the soil particles. So when the attraction between soil particles and water molecule is more than the gravitational pull, it will be retained. That means, in capillary pores, water is retained at the, at the force higher than gravitational pull. Otherwise, it will be drained by the gravity. So, so this line explains these things. Forces acting on capillary water in micro pores exert more force on water than do macro pores. So capillary water is held by both cohesive and adhesive force. You tell me about hygroscopic water. In hygroscopic water, it is held by what? Cohesive force or adhesive force? Yes, yes, definitely it is held by the adhesive force. In capillary water, but capillary water is held by both? Yes. Now this is the hygroscopic water. So hygroscopic water is retained as a thin fin around the soil particles. It is it is retained due to adhesive force. This water cannot be used by the plant. So biological classification already we have discussed. Field capacity, so what, 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 what is that? It is the amount of water in soil after three drainage has removed gravitational water after two to three days. We have already discussed this thing. This is wilting point, amount of water when plant begin to wilt. So the water between field capacity and permanent wilting point will be 
available with land this is called available water now you see this diagram this is you 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 think about this diagram this is the same same diagram so here the soil is saturated that means entire void is occupied by occupied by water due to gravity the water which are present these are the macropores the white are one is white one is macropores due to gravity the water present in this macropores are drained away now the moisture content now this moisture content is fill capacity again due to evaporation and transpiration water will go away so again this water this water again so part of the part of capillary water the part of capillary water again go away the water content at this point when plant will plant will wilt so permanent wilting this water is called permanent wilting point so the water content between fuel capacity and permanent wilting point is available water which will be available to plant again the repetition of the same diagram so at wilting you see the saturated saturated condition in saturated conditions all the pores are all the pores are full these are the waters in fill capacity it is again decreasing in permanent wilting point further it is decreasing so again this this concept is again explained in two types of clay you tell me where the total pore is more in sand or in clay one group is telling sand one group is telling clay which is which is true clay why yes so in case of in case of sand total porosity is less but macro pore is more so in case of in case of clay total porosity will be more but macro pore will macro pore will less now you tell me where the gravitation of water will be more in clay or in sand yes because it will be having more macro pore more macro pore means more gravitation of water it will be retaining less that is why you see this is sand that means here more macro pore more gravitation of water here clay means here less macro pore less gravitation of water so where the available water will be more in in sand or in clay because here micro pore is less so water retained in the micro pore will be less so available water will be less in sand as compared to clay soil now again tell me whether this available water will be equally available to be plant in this entire duration say you got fill capacity today so you got fill capacity 10 days later you tell me in this entire 10 days will the plant absorb what extract water in equal strength so regarding this regarding this there are various concept there are various concept there are three concept so there are three concept the first theory the first concept it speaks that from this is, see you see this is the permanent wilting point this is the uh, this is the fill capacity this is the permanent wilting point the water between fill capacity and permanent wilting point is called available water so the first concept this is the earliest compass oldest concept the the oldest concept is says that the water content between fill capacity and permanent wilting point is equally available to the plant that means from what we assumed if it is fill capacity today it will be permanent wilting point 10 days later that means according to first concept from today to the 10th day the relative rate of plants activity will not be affected according to first concept definitely it is not true it is definitely not true the sec according to second concept when days passes so from the from the next day the its activity will be decreasing and in permanent wilting point it will be reaching the lowest level that is also not true 
the, the third concept, it, it tells that, it states that up to a certain days, up to a certain days, the, up to certain days, it, activity will not be affected. Say it may be two days, three days, four days, five days like that. So after that, it's the, if water content decreases, the plant's activity will be decreased. So now tell me, when you will have to irrigate now? That means you have to irrigate where? At this point, isn't it? When, at the point, at this stage, from where the activity of the plants will be decreasing, at this point, you will have to irrigate. That means the first concept is definitely not true. Second concept is also not true. The third concept is true. So when you irrigate the soil, come to the field capacity level up to certain days, up to certain days, so it's although plants will be available water, in this entire available water range, the activity will not be affected up to certain days. After that, although the plant will be at available water range, its activity will be decreased. So at that point, at that point, you will have to irrigate the soil. Now this entire thing, physical classification and biological classification, we can summarize with this diagram. <laughs> See, this is moisture content. Y axis is moisture content. This is tension. Tension is at saturation, what will be tension? At fill capacity, it is 0.1 to 0.3. At saturation, what will be tension? It should be zero. That means here it is zero. If it is fill capacity, at this point, tension should be 0.3. Yes. In terms of water potential, it will be minus 0.3 bar, yes. If it is minus 31, this will be hygroscopic coefficient. If it is 15, it is permanent holding point. Join this point. It is say 10,000 bar. Now you tell me what is this? This water is, is gravitational water in physical classification and drainable water in biological classification. So this water is this water is gravitational water in physical classification and biological water in biological classification it will be drainable water what is this field capacity to where is field capacity this is field capacity Field capacity to permanent holding point is this. This is available water. Okay. 
between field capacity to hygroscopic ocean it will be it will be it is from hygroscopic coefficient to 10000 bar it is hygroscopic water Now the same diagram, it is drawn here. The water between 0 and minus 0.3 bar, this will be drained by the gravity. This is, this is gravitational water or drainable water. So minus 0.3 bar to minus 0.3 bar, it is the capillary water. A part of capillary water will be available. What is the range? minus 0.3 bar to minus 15 bar. So rest is minus 0.15 bar to 16 bar. It is available for survival. So rest water is not available to the plant. So what are the different factors? They will affect the gravitational water, capillary water and hygroscopic water. So one factor is definitely the texture. So if the soil is sandy, then it will be easily drained by the gravity. So gravitational water will be more in case of sandy soil as compared to the clay type of soil. The flow of water is proportional to the size of the particles. If the particle size is bigger, the flow will be rapid. That means that is why in sandy type of soil, it will be easily drained away. So in, in case of clay type of soil, it will be retained for longer time. So again it is affected by the structure. If the soil is well structured, it will be easily drained away so gravitational water will be moved. So in clay soils having single grain structure, the gravitational water percolation is more slowly. In clay soils form aggregates, the moment of gravitational water improves. That means when there is aggregations, when there is good structure, the gravitational water will be moved. The capillary water, it will be affected by the surface tensions, soil textures, soil structure and soil organic matter content. So regarding tensions, if the surface tension is increased, so capillary water will be moved. So you tell me now, whether capillary water will be more in clay type of soil or in case of sunny type of soil. Why? Region is why? Yes. Then if you give organic matter content, the capillary water will be more or less. Why? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So hygroscopic water, it is, it is mainly, it is mainly influenced by the surface because this, since it is a, it is surface, hygroscopic water is retained in the, due to adhesive forces. So if the surface area is more, so hygroscopic water will be more. If the surface area is less, hygroscopic water will be less. So where the surface area will be more, in sand or in clay? Yes, if this particle size is less, the surface area will be more. That means in clay, surface area will be more. So hygroscopic water will be more in clay as compared to sandy soil.